guys jaram here in this video we are going to learn very very important topic of this laravel configurations so if you are working with laravel project then you should have good understanding of the configuration what are the configuration you can do in the laravel framework so if you go to the manual on the laravel website i am using laravel 11 latest version this is the latest one laravel 11 and uh, there is a configuration you see there is a configuration section and they have very nicely explained what are the different configurations can be done inside the laravel project if you're working on a laravel project then you should have good understanding of this configuration so if you see uh, the first thing about the configuration it's mentioned is the about right so what is the meaning of about here is uh, the you can just by writing, if you are writing the PHP artisan about command, you will be able to know overview of your application configuration, drivers and environment using this PHP artisan command, right? So I have already set up my project, this uh, my Laravel project is there, Laravel 11 version I have installed, this, I have created this project, I am just opening the terminal here and uh, let it here right so I want to know about uh, my application configuration drivers and environment I can use this command php artisan about right so if you see giving all the information related environment cache drivers so all information in one at one location you can find using this command php addition about right next is uh, suppose that i want to know only about a, in about the environment of the project right about is giving me environment cache and drivers right but if i want to know only about the environment then what i should write here php partition about and then only only equal to environment right so I am able to get all the information related to environment of my Laravel project, right? Similarly, if I want to know about my database only, right? Here you can see uh, environment cache and drivers and here it's giving me information about database SQLite by default it's using. And I want to know about the database information of my project, then I have to only write here uh, PHP partition config, then show, right? What database, right? So it will give some detailed information about the database your project is using. So you can see here default is SQLite and uh, as I've installed this one using, um, no, I'm not using MySQL, SQL Server, or any other database. I by default I've chosen the SQL Lite, so that's why it's uh, by default SQL Lite and driver SQL Lite is using. It's also giving other MySQL connections information. You can put the information according to need of your project. MariaDB, PSGRES, and uh, Redis settings. So all the database related information you can get here right now here is it's all about about of your application right 
the most important thing in the configuration is the environment configuration what is the environment configuration if you see uh, your project directory you see this dot env file right dot env file so basically laravel uses the dot env php library to load this dot env file so whenever you will install a new laravel project uh, under the root of this root directory of your project you will see one for file is dot env and uh, it also contains dot env dot example right so this dot env example contains the common environment variables and uh, whenever you uh, do any installation all the information from this one is copied to the dot env right and uh, also the dot env file contains some common configuration and uh, and this configuration may be differ from the if you are running your project locally than the production server because production server may have different configuration and uh, your local working directory of this laravel project can have different configuration right and uh, whatever the value you can see here in the dot env are used or read inside this if you see the config in the config filter there are folder there are lots of files you see here app name so through the using env function uh, laravel can read the name of the app and this one is the default value if i have supplied some value here app name is laravel then this will get from the dot env file if no value is there then it will read this value so so you see uh, lots of configuration files are here and all these configuration files are using env function you see every every env function is there right so if those values are already de uh, declared and defined inside it's this dot env then your configuration files will read from this value using the dot, uh, using the env function right and uh, one important thing is that while you are uh, developing you are, you are working with a team and uh, one single project may there is chances that more than one people are working so you share this file with everyone what are the common settings or configuration will be for this project right because this will not be same for all the developers who were working on this project because according to their system configuration maybe someone is working on different operating system or different folder file location so this may differ but using this dot env env example it will be shared with each and every one and they will know that what is the configuration is changed so they can use this one right so so this is the uh, some little understanding about the dot env and dot env example files and uh, also very important th uh, one important thing is that uh, if you any variable like all the these all the variables like app name app env app key app debug app time zone app url app local these are all the variables and uh, these can be overridden 
if you're working in the code in inside the laravel project all these values can be overwritten uh, such as a server at a server level or system level environment variables so these are not something the fixed values while writing your code inside controller or or somewhere you can override these values now you should also uh, make sure this dot env file should be secure right because this file contains all the configuration all the like you see the aws configuration is there mailer password is there then redis is there uh, similarly uh, database details will be here so it's it's always recommended that um, if you're working in some version control or source control this file should not be committed or sent to the repository we should always exclude this one right either it will a disaster for your application someone can get access of this and uh, they can uh, get access of cred um, sensitive credential and those information they can be used for some damage can damage your application right also there is a dot env file and if you suppose you are working on different environment so environment can be suppose like uh, dot env dot suppose that uh, local or staging i am doing this one right so we can have our different env files according to the different deployment of our application so on my staging i want to use this one right for the development server i want to use dot env sorry dot env dot development right i want to use this one for the production suppose that i want to use dot env dot production right so i can have different additional environmental files and according to the need if there is a different configuration i can put different env files and if you see uh, this one here is the environment this is the local so local local is environment then by default it will pick this file and important thing is that if you were uh, passing one value suppose that uh, before uh, loading your application in one variable laravel determines if an in, uh, app environment externally uh, provided so like uh, you can have cli through the cli you can write the environment and uh, if you try to write that environment through the cli and if that environment variable uh, environment var uh, file is available it will then loaded else it will load the dot env file right so whenever you are launching your project if you're launching and using this environment then this will be loaded if this is not there then this dot env file will be loaded and uh, the important thing is another is the variable types so if you see some values are string you see all are these are the string this is the boolean this is the string this is also look like a string 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 this is null blank empty this is null and not not a value 
So when you read these values using this ENV function, if this is true means Boolean true will be written in the ENV function. This is true in within the bracket then definitely this will be the true. If false then false, false then false. If value is empty then it will be a string empty string. In the bracket and we have not given any value uh, if there is a bracket and no value is applied there then it will be also blank string empty that is empty null so you already see uh, there is a null values right so in the environmental variable function you will also return null simply null in the bracket will be null also if you are putting some values so here is the Laravel, app name is Laravel, it's a single word. But if you want to use something like this, uh, Laravel, one second, I want my project name is Laravel project, right? So it's recommended to use in quotes, right? Like this. If there is a multiple words or, or there is a string, uh, in the values try to put in the quotes right double quotes how you can access the values if the values are in the these values are in dot env file right so in configuration file how these values are accessed if you see app name i will use the name of app name app name is here already here so using this function app name it will retrieve the value of app name and this name will contain the app name if no value was there then suppose that this is blank nothing is there right uh, i have not given any value suppose it's some it's like look like this then it will default will take the laravel right either this will take this one so this is how you can uh, retrieve the environment configuration right and if you are if you are inside the your project and uh, you want to determine the current environment so using the app env you can get the current environment right and this value can also be accessible using the environment method so you see here it's a it's using app for shard and within that app facade is using the environment method and you will return the that environment in, in, in which environment my project is running and uh, I can also supply the values if my environment is uh, local then do this and uh, if my environment is local or staging do something so this is how I can take some action based on the which environment my project is running right also there is very uh, good to know very important thing we should know encryption of the environment files as we talked that we should not push this file if you are working on a version control we should always ignore to upload these files on the repository or github or bitbucket because this file contains many credentials and those if someone can get the access of this credential with bad intention they can damage or harm your application so but there is um, another approach you can use you can commit this file in repository and uh, nobody can access or read the contents of this .env file 
So how this is possible? This is possible through the encryption of, the, of this env file. How you can do this one? So we can do like this php partition env encrypt right if you see laravel encrypted this env file and the created file is dot env encrypted so if you see this is not readable format now this file is now encrypted and this is in this form so you see one key has been generated by laravel this is the key which will be used to decrypt the file so i can commit this file in my repository and uh, someone is getting that file dot encrypted that person should have this key and also should have knowledge of the cipher cipher is basically the what is the algorithm used to encrypt this file and this is the generated file right so now i can delete this file you see dot env is not there and uh, i can post my code in the repository but this dn.env file is needed while running the project on the server. We are talking for sharing the code on the repository, exposing this .env file. We should not put this raw file, .env raw file there, either it will be accessed by someone. So how we can, we can put this in the repository and whenever we need to use, we can decrypt and use. So we should encrypt this one. So Laravel by default has created this key using this cipher and this file is created, right? Now how I can decrypt this file? So the person who has access of these codes can get the access uh, all the codes on their system and now this will not work until we decrypt this file we have to turn this in the dot env file so how we can do this one so we have to just write here php partition env decrypt right is there right now here i have to provide the key equal to this is the key so you should have shared this key through different medium to that person and if you see now dot env is now visual here right so this way you can encrypt or decrypt your dot env file and this is the cipher used right here in the encryption you can use your own key and uh, like i was doing encryption and uh, i can put my own key right so previous one was the system generated but uh, if I'm looking to create, give my own key, so I can put here my own key. Suppose, and also you can change the cipher. Algorithm you can also change. Previously, by default, if you see, uh, while doing the encryption, I'm just uh, env encrypt, right? This file is already there, then I'm just deleting again encrypted you see this is the algorithm used cipher used it's a 256 bit cipher but i can use the lower also so for the encryption i'm just i'm going to use different uh, key and different cipher 
सो हाउ यू कैन डू दिस हाउ का आई कैन डू आई कैन प्रोवाइड माई की इक्वल टू इफ द साइफर इज ए एस वन ट्वेंटी एस सी बी सी देन द लेंथ ऑफ द की विल बी सिक्सटीन करेक्टर एंड इन द केस ऑफ ए एस टू फिफ्टी सिक्स सी बी सी लेंथ ऑफ द करेक्टर शुड बी इफ यू कैलकुलेट दिस वन दिस इज द थर्टी टू करेक्टर राइट सो आई कैन राइट हियर लाइक सिक्सटीन करेक्टर I can mention here the cipher also. Cipher equal to A E S one twenty eight C B C, right? So if you see my encrypted ENV is here, and uh, key is this one, right? This is the key I have provided. Right, and uh, cipher used in this one. So this is encrypted. So how I can decrypt this one now? Just I'm deleting the dot env file, and I can decrypt it. Decrypt env decrypt, and uh, I have to supply the key equal. This is the key. Right. Then also I have to provide the cipher. Cipher. Right. Cipher equal to A E S one twenty eight C B C. Right. So you can see dot env file is retrieved here. so this is the way you can encrypt and decrypt your env files and like i was giving i was deleting but uh, i can also decrypt if i try to decrypt this one it's giving me environment file already exist so i can also use one uh, parameter like hyphen hyphen force so it will overwrite the existing dot env file now it's uh, giving me files already existing yeah now it's overwriting right also we can choose uh, which file i want to encrypt or which file i want to decrypt based on the environment so we can mention the environment and only that file will be encrypted or decrypted so i hope it this encryption and decryption is clear to you the next thing is uh, accessing configuration values so there is a config facade you can use this facade this is known as the facades basically this is the name space and uh, using this config you can use the gate and app using dot you can access the configuration value in your code while you walking inside the files right so these are the different like uh, dot app time zone you can put a uh, retrieve default value if the config value doesn't exist then it will you are trying to retrieve the default value here if value is not there it will this will be the set to this time zone right this is the way you can set the values set here we are getting here we are using get here you are using set right same two things are the same thing okay now there is also typed configuration also like config string config key we can put the typed here and uh, 
if these values are not matching with the typed i am getting the key and this should be string and i am and I'm, while retrieving we are getting some number only this will throw error so this is the some type we can define for the configurations another thing is about this uh, configuration is the caching as we know there is a how many configuration files are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so whenever we'll run all these configuration files are loaded used so it little uh, you can say some performance related issue can be there it will slow down your application so in the laravel you can uh, speed your application by caching this different uh, configuration file into a single file using config column cache right what will happen this will combine all the configuration these and whatever the value is mentioned here these in a single file right all the config configurations will be combined into the single files and which will quickly loaded by the framework when your project is running so how we can create a single configuration file you have to just write php addition config cache configuration cache is successfully created so where is this file so if i go to Sources. One second. Bootstrap cache. This is the config created. You see. So whenever your project will run, all the fixed value configurations will be loaded from this file, right? So if you are doing any changes on those files, those will be not entertained if you have created this file. You have to clear the cache and again, again can generate the new configuration file, right? It will always, your Laravel framework is always load this file now from the cache folder of the bootstrap. So for this reason, uh, if you're going to change anything inside those uh, config, if you're do, doing any change inside this config or inside this .env, it laravel will ignore all these changes right so we 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 should um, make sure that um, values should be uh, properly added in the configuration it because dot uh, env function will call and it will get the old values right and our now new configuration will be loaded from here only from here right so the idea is that if you are uh, purging suppose that you have to we have done some changes on those files we have to clear the cache so how you can do this one you can write here php partition config clear so you see this file has been deleted this file is deleted now and after the changes you can create the new cache file right so based on your need you can do all these things And also one important thing is mentioned here, if you execute the config cache command during your deployment process, you should be sure that you can only call in env function from within your configuration files. Once the configuration file is cached, the .env file will not be loaded as I mentioned. Therefore, the env function will only return external system level environment variables, right? Here is the one thing configuration publishing. Um, 
here it already mentioned most of the larval configuration files are already published in your publications config directory these all are published if you see these all are published but there are some files like course.php and view.php which are not published by default as most of the application do not need these files and uh, never need to modify them but anyway if you're looking to publish uh, some files which you are creating then you can publish using config publish right so if i write this one you see which configuration files you would like to publish so app is already there auth is already there broadcasting is not here so if i choose the broadcasting and click broadcasting configuration file is loaded here right so this is published this was by default it's not added because most of the applications do not need this configuration file that's why it's one not here but you can publish these files configuration according to your so again you can see uh, cache is there uh, course course is not here database is there file system is there hashing is not here hashing will also publish logging is not here logging will be published mail queue is there services is there session is there view is not here view is also published so these are the some extra configuration files which you can publish right so now if you want to publish all the configuration files you have to just write here publish all you see some new configuration files will be created like view these all are existing because that's why giving error all are published hashing is newly file created course is new files is created so these are the new files are published also there is a debug mode debug mode is that if you're working on a project locally in the development mode max your your uh, debug mode is true right in the nv file if you go there is nv file and uh, if you see somewhere debug app debug true but production if your website is in production always make this false either some in uh, your website can throw some error and those will be visible to the general public and some configuration can also be published there while there is an error in your website so it's always recommended to make this app debugging false while your project is in production next thing is the maintenance sometimes your website need to be put in maintenance mode so that something can be uploaded and then make it live so how you can make the your project maintenance mode it's php addition down so suppose that my project is running php partition so right so my project is running on this url i'm typing this one so my project is normally running right now I am I can use PHP partition down right so if I refresh this one you see 503 service unavailable so now my website is in maintenance mode right and how we can turn into the get out from the maintenance mode PHP partition out now if you refresh this website now it's right so this is how you can put your website in maintenance mode and get out from the maintenance mode also there is a suppose you put your website in maintenance mode right uh, one second first off you can put 50 second refresh time now if you see my website is in not maintenance mode and uh, if i see this php addition down refresh every time uh, every 15 second 
so that if someone is not able to access their website their browser will automatically refresh every 15 second so if you see let me put this in 10 second right now my website is down and uh, every 10 second this will get uh, refreshed automatically so that when the at the client side many people are accessing this website when the site will be up automatically this page will be loaded right you see every 10 seconds it's automatically refreshing i'm not refreshing from my key so once uh, this is in up if once my website is up you see after 10 seconds it's automatically loaded because it's automatically refreshing itself the next thing is that uh, you can also put retries after every sec 60 second it's through the header but sometimes it's uh, not work some browser ignore this one so good to use this one one important thing is that you have put your website in maintenance mode but uh, you want to access you only want to access you know the, how you can access the website so this is the way you can put the secret key so i am putting my website in maintenance mode and i know this secret key is this one right this is the secret key so i have put it my site in maintenance mode and uh, now if i want to access the website what i have to do copy this one this and uh, if you see this website refresh is in maintenance mode just by slash type this one this secret key i have used while uh, putting the site in maintenance mode i can access and now it's redirected to the root of the website and basically this there is a cookie created inside my browser which is taking care of this so this website will be now loaded for me only other people not able to access until they have they have not this secret key, right so this is another way you want to have put a website in maintenance but still but still you want to access you can put one secret key and uh, so down with the secret key if you do not want to provide your own key uh, let me put it up right so if i just paste here with secret right so it's created it's uh, on key laravel is created it's on key so if, we, if i refresh this website this is in maintenance mode but i can now use this i can access this website right the same website if i try to access in this is my firefox now i've tried to access in chrome service is not available because in the chrome cookie is not set that's why it's not available here i have used the secret that's why i can access the website right there, there is another thing the same site is uh, running through multiple server so i have to put every year down and every year we are up but to Uh, remove this multiple down multiple up what you can do in the app.php file there is a maintenance and you can put the driver cache and a store database so if you're using this maintenance uh, setting so you have to put once down and once up for every server so this is the setting for if your website is running through multiple servers here is another pre-rendering of maintenance mode view so basically when you have you are putting website in maintenance mode and many things are uh, uploading files are deploying on your server so someone is accessing they may get different errors because that maintenance mode code is still not uploaded so at the 
top level laravel is providing something 503 errors rendering so we can use this one at the top of everything and our website will be shown in the maintenance mode also suppose that i want to make my website down and till my website is down i want to redirect my website to some different location i can use the redirect slash something like this so this will redirect here on the route and this is you already know to up your maintenance to the up mode and uh, two three things are here also guys uh, before that uh, when my website is in maintenance mode this is maintenance mode 503 service enable is showing if i want to customize this page we can customize this page through resources view errors 503 blade.php so if you see under resources views uh, i can create one uh, errors folder and inside i can put the this blade file then that will be that display will be loaded now uh, two things we should uh, know before closing this configuration thing if your website is in maintenance mode then all the QA, queued jobs which are in pipeline will not be handled those will be stopped right and uh, once you have put your website in the normal mode up mode those queue will be start to execute and uh, also while putting the maintenance maybe take some time your website may be down for some while making the website down it may take some time so there are some there are some alternative uh, recommended by laravel is the laravel paper and envoy so that zero downtime deployment with the laravel will be possible using either laravel vapor or envoy we see later on so guys these are the configuration i hope some understanding you have now about the configuration of the laravel project so we'll come with the new videos in the next session still you have not subscribed my channel please subscribe so that you can get the notification for the new videos till then happy learning see you soon